In this video I'm gonna give you my best tips on how to photograph jumping spiders out in the wild. So I spent the last few days out on the countryside in the place where I grew up and there were so many insects to photograph and above all there were a lot of jumping spiders and they are such a nice subject to photograph so I want to make a little video with some tips on how to best capture them. Tip number one, where to look. And to find a jumping spider you need to think like a jumping spider. <laughs> <laughs> and they are pretty special because they don't create their own nets, instead they walk around on flat surfaces uh, most often and uh, chase prey like uh, flies and other spiders. So they tend to be in places where a lot of insects land, like a tree wall on a house, that is where I found most of them the last few days. Uh, because these are surfaces where the jumping spiders can walk around freely and look for uh, flies and stuff that have landed and jump on them. And they tend to walk around on these surfaces, especially on sunny days when uh, it is warm. So my best tip is to go out on a warm and sunny day, look on walls to houses, like wooden walls, uh, and look on tree trunks. But you can also find them on leaves in some cases and also even in the shade. But my experience tells me they mostly like to sit in the sun. Here is one sitting on a brick and uh, you can also find them even on windows. This one is sitting on a window. So tip number two, how to recognize them? How do you know it's a jumping spider? Well, I would say once you recognize them one time, you will easily recognize them again. They have a very characteristic pattern of moving. As you can see, they kind of walk in very short bursts. And they are small, compact. I think the size varies from uh, just a few millimeters to maybe one centimeter in length. Uh, basically like one of your fingernails is the biggest they get. And uh, yeah, they tend to sit like this. As you can see, this wall was kind of full of them. <laughs> they are everywhere. And I tended to miss jumping spiders a lot in the past because I tended to ignore spiders in general because they usually don't make very nice subjects. But jumping spiders are an exception. They are so cute and beautiful. So they are really worth photographing, I would say. So, how to photograph them in the best way possible? There are two ways, mainly. <laughs> One is to try to photograph them when they're sitting on their wall or whatever they are sitting. But this is tricky. It is tricky to get a nice shot because you are usually uh, restricted to like uh, an angle where you photograph them all, uh, almost from the top and then you don't always get a nice angle. So I would say that you get the nicest shots if you um, take something like a tree branch or some object of some kind and hold it out close to the spider and sooner or later they will jump on it and then you can uh, take this object and uh, lift it up and take some nicer shots. These are some shots when the spider is sitting on a surface and as you can see, I am restricted to taking shots for like, from like a 45 degree angle because it's hard to fit the lens in another way. Here you see me photographing one sitting on uh, a sofa. And uh, this one actually jumped up on some various objects and now I could get much better angles. Here he is sitting, or she, sitting on my uh, tripod, my gorilla pod. And now I can get much better angles and as you can see I can get be better backgrounds. So try to get your jumping spider to jump on a smaller object that, can, that you can hold in your hand to get more flexibility. That's it about jumping spiders, but there were so many other insects out on the countryside in the last few days that I photographed, so I want to talk about some more of them. First up, stink bugs. 
Stink bugs are really pretty and they are usually not that skittish so they are pretty easy to photograph. I found some on this apple tree uh, in my mom's garden but very often they are sitting on like black currant bushes uh, but you can find them basically anywhere uh, very often on leaves and they come in very different colors and uh, usually they make for really nice photos. So the reason they are called stink bugs, uh, you may find if you try to touch them or come too close to them, <laughs> they can emit some really, really stinky uh, compounds. Here this guy got tired of me photographing him and he just walked away. So I had to find another subject. Another thing there were plenty of in my mother's garden was grasshoppers and I haven't found these where I live but in my mom's garden they were everywhere <laughs> and they are actually really nice to photograph because they are a little bit bigger so you can get uh, better depth of field and get more details in your shots and they were quite friendly they were sitting everywhere on plastic objects and in the grass and I had a good chance to get some shots of them. Uh, lots of fun to photograph grasshoppers. And uh, I also photographed some other insects. Here are a couple of my favorite photographs from the last few days. First up, this ladybug with uh, interesting colors. And also this larva. Uh, I think uh, this shot got pretty cool. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Please don't miss my newsletter. Subscribe at mwroll.com and find me on Instagram. My name there is mwroll. Also, subscribe. I post new macro photography videos every week. <laughs> Over and out. Bye.